Hello, I'm so excited. I am about to hike for three days throughout the Italian Dolomites, which is a mountain range here in Italy. And I've always wanted to do this. This has been such a bucket list dream. My first ever backpacking like several day trip was literally just last year in Catalina. I was originally gonna do it solo and I was talking to my friend Eric when I was in Brazil and telling him about it. And he's like, wait, can I come? And I was like, oh my gosh, honestly, hell yes. That would be great. I was a little nervous about doing it solo in a different country with navigating different Hello. systems. <laughs> Internet. <laughs> so he'll be joining me as well. So I'm actually in the Dolomites for like eight or nine days, but I'm hunt to head hiking for about three. So it's kind of part one and there will be a part two of more of like a road trip experience through the Dolomites. And I'll be doing this like hunt to hiking with kind of a route I built on my own. And honestly, it was so confusing and complex to figure out how to organize this trip for myself. So I have an entire explanation at the very end of this video about how I did it. So if you have any questions, they will all be answered at the end. But Let's get to hiking. We decided to take the bus from Cortina del Pesco to San Cristian to start the trail at Campina del Pai. We sprinted to get here, so so far so good. In the rain, the journey begins. We're a little unsure of day two, but uh, day two is tomorrow, so let's focus on day one. <laughs> that's the spirit. One step at a time, quite literally. I got my novice hiking outfit, 30 euro thrifted puffer from a thrift store in Paris two days ago, and my soul guard backpack, my Hoka Clifton 8. We're ready to rumble. We have about three hours and 20 minutes to get to. Fans route, which we will then walk to La Varela, which is about 15 minutes, which is another refugio. So it's a good backup if you're trying to do this hike. And the first is occupied. But again, I'll explain at the end of the video all the planning, as well as my tips on what not to do and what to do, because I am learning a lot. See, we're zigzagging all the way up the mountain. Is it going so far up there? Almost up. Maybe. We hope. Am I allowed in? Am I on the list? Oh my god. It has been pouring rain this whole hike, and I am chilled to the bone. But we're almost there, and there are happy cows. How y'all doing? after dinner. It's so stunning here, it's so peaceful. We had a really lovely hike today, it was about four hours. The first hour was like very intense elevation gain and then it was pretty much smooth sailing from there. And now going on a little evening hike after a nice big meal. You wanna say anything? Hello. <laughs> what so, do you think? Very charming. Very charming. Tomorrow's gonna be a little bit more chaotic. We're going to a different refugio that's very far because it's the only one that was available to book. So it might be a little bit more chaotic, but for today, pretty easy and beautiful. Look, guys, I 
guys, I found a walking stick and I'm very proud of it. I was looking for one all day and regretting that I didn't bring a hiking stick and I found the perfect walking stick. Tomorrow's gonna be great. So being immersed in nature who does wonders for my mental health, it's truly one of the best ways that I can find just peace and clarity and feel more present. But sometimes you need a little bit of extra help. I've been a long time proponent and fan of therapy as a way to support your mental health and just get additional help with the challenges we face in life. So I started using BetterHelp, which is today's sponsor, several years ago. And if you're unfamiliar, they're the world's largest online therapy service. All it takes to sign up is essentially just filling out a few questions and they match you with a therapist in a few days. And honestly, finding the right therapist is a little bit like dating. But what's nice about BetterHelp is that that you're able to switch your therapist at no additional cost if it's not the right fit right away. So their mission is to make therapy more affordable and accessible and you can do it all from the comfort of your own home online, which I love. We all have our own issues and struggles, like it's completely normal. And even if things seem to be going well, it's still gonna be really great to have somebody to talk to. The link, which you know always helps when you click on it down in the description below, also gets you 10% off your first month BetterHelp. So you can take charge of your mental health by visiting betterhelp.com slash Favor. Check it out for yourself. all the way up this mountain over here, all the way up, all the way down into a valley, and then back up this other mountain to this refugio. Okay, let's go. Lena, almost there. It's been quite the journey. We're on our like second mountain of the day and we still have all that way to go. We're all out of water, so make sure you pack enough water and find a stick. I have a spiritual connection <laughs> to the stick now. I think I need to bring it back to me. Saving me. <laughs> go all the way up. La Gazelle, La Gazoo. We hiked over five hours today, I think over 10 miles. Did like two different mountain peaks, so a ton of elevation gain. And most people would stop and stay here for the night, but it was full. So we actually have to take a cable car to a bus, to two more cable cars to get to the hut because it was all that was available. Very hard to plan here, but I think this might be one of the best views I've ever seen. Like, look at this.
to 2,750 meters. So, how are you feeling? Happy. The legs are the legs are ready to rest. We are happy that there's a cable car down. <laughs> and then we Rally. have to rush to catch the next cable car. the cable car up. We were supposed to take the cable car up because we've already walked 11 miles up two mountains for over five and a half hours. And so we drove here, but there was a marathon. And so then there was an hour of traffic. And we missed the cable cars. And now we have to hike up another mountain yeah. for another hour and a half. And we're probably gonna miss dinner at the refugio. Yeah, it looks tall. Say a prayer to our legs. Oh my God. Walking up a giant ski hill. It's incredibly steep, and we're just zigzagging our way all the way to the top. It's been about an hour of extremely intense switchbacks, but trying our best. Is, I think this is the coolest view I've probably ever woken up to. We hiked down half the mountain and then we're cable carring down the rest. Hello, we've made it. I've got my tiny little mic. And let's talk about the Hut to Hut hiking experience in the Dolomites. This was my dream trip. One of my main resolutions was to go on a hiking trip within the Dolomites. I went on my first ever like backpacking, several day hiking experience last year in Catalina, which you can check out if you'd like. And that really inspired me to try to do that in the Dolomites, which is this Northern Italian like mountain range. So let's talk about how I planned this. This was probably one of the most time intensive trips I've ever planned and I travel a lot. It really took a while for me to get a grasp on the region, on the different routes. I think the first main tip would be book in advance. Basically, when you go to select a route to do your hut to hut hiking, you can either kind of build your own or you can do some of the famous ones like the Altavia 1 or the Altavia 2. But my problem was that the hut to hut you know, like pipeline, one hut like in the middle of maybe a Ford would be booked out. And then I'd have to start from ground zero again where I'm like, let me pick a brand new route and like search to see if then these other four huts are available. And a lot of the websites, it's not like you can just like click a uh, reserve and all of a sudden you're like locked in. You have to email many of the huts and a lot of times they'll take like three weeks to respond. So you'll think you have like a route down and after three weeks they're like, sorry, it's full. And then you'd be like, back to ground zero. What I found really helpful was looking at other much more experienced hikers routes or travel companies routes and just copying them essentially. If you want to save hours of time this is one of those few places I honestly would recommend like yeah if you have the money book with a travel company and have them book the refugios for you so you can figure out everything else but the refugio booking part I found to be the most difficult if you're not doing it like six months in advance. I will say that it was helpful that I spent so much time researching this area because it gave me a greater understanding of what I wanted to see, of what the different refugios were. So now as I'm finally in the Dolomites, I like recognize every refugio name and like every town name because I spent so much time researching it. When it comes to what you need for your trekking experience, obviously have good shoes. I just had running shoes because I'm traveling for two months, so I don't have space for hiking shoes. I'm wearing my Hoka Clifton running shoes and they served me very well. Obviously did not have hiking poles, but I found the walking stick of my dreams, which honestly saved my ass. Obviously pack a lot of water, have a good backpack. Make sure that any of the treks you're doing, they don't have via ferratas unless that's what you want, which is essentially kind of like almost mountain climbing, give or take, which you need specific gear and helmets for. So just be mindful of that when you're looking at a route. 
if you're exploring more of the Dolomites region beyond just the hut to hut hiking, definitely rent a car. It's not super easy to get around with just public transport to the different towns and hikes. If you are staying at a certain hotel, a lot of times they'll hold on to their luggage for you for several days, or you can potentially park their car maybe with a fee, which kind of makes this process a bit easier. I will say too, if you're somebody that's used to camping, the hut to hut trekking is glamorous. It's so nice to get to these refugios and have like a nice bed, a warm shower, usually a great meal, a drink. I will say it's not exactly cheap if you are used to the camping experiences. Lavarella was about 65 euros per person, which included breakfast and a bunk bed double room. And they also offer dinner, which again, it's not cheap. It's probably anywhere from like 10 to 20 euros. Another thing I would recommend is definitely bring cash. Most of the refugios we ended up staying at did accept card, but some of the refugios on the way where we went to just get like a beer or snacks only accept cash. When it comes to the Dolomites, there are obviously many different these valleys and towns to visit. We start in Cortina del Peso, and then we bus to San Cassian to start the hike at Capana Alpina to go to Refugio Lavarella. That last day was so chaotic. The first day was easy. It was like six miles. There was some elevation gain, but it was pretty chill. The second day was crazy because we basically hiked a big chunk of the Alta Via One from Refugio Lavarella, and we hiked all the way to Refugio Legazao, which was about 10 miles, two miles massive mountains, a lot of elevation gain and elevation loss. And then when we got to the top of that, which in ideal world, I would have been able to stay there. But again, the refugio was booked out. The only refugio I could find was Refugio Pimedes, which was quite far. So it was about seven hours of hiking and like 15 miles. So by the time we got to Refugio Pimedes, we were so exhausted. I absolutely love this experience. It was so special to finally be able to do. And it was really lovely to have somebody join me as well, because I thought originally was going to do it solo. And doing something like this without technology, even if it's just for three days, is such an incredible like mental reset and you're really just focused on like the beauty of the nature and kind of putting one foot in front of the other and kind of trying to get to that end goal while enjoying yourself along the way. If you have any more questions, please feel free to leave a comment down below or DM me directly at Elena Tabor. This was really the trip of a lifetime. I feel so lucky to be able to experience this and I hope you enjoyed. Thanks so much. Bye.